Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Second Peter chapter 2. But, so we're continuing from chapter 1. Now, chapter markings are not part of the Bible, but they are inspired to a point. They help us look location like you know I want to tell you you know let's go to page 487 three quarters away down you know we can say chapter 2 verse 1 but we are continuing from chapter 1 but now remember this is from an attack from inside the church chapter uh, 2nd Peter but there are false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you. So there are false prophets out there in the world. Okay, we, that's a basic fact that was spoken about by Jesus. That's spoken about by Paul. We'll see it in Jude, Lord willing. And then Peter says, guess what? There are false teachers among you. There are people in the camp of Christians. If I can say the camp of the Christians. In the assembly of Christians, and they are teaching false, and they're in with the Christians because you're a church, because you're saved, doesn't mean that okay, we can't come in and do damage. You'd be deceiving yourself to think, Oh, our church is perfect, and no one would be able to come in here and do any harm. False teachers. Now, there's a difference between false prophets and teachers. Prophets say, you know, the rapture's coming in 1988. It's a false prophecy. The church will be raptured during the tribulation. That's a false prophecy. False teachers would be, Paul dealt with one saying that the rapture, I mean, yeah, the resurrection's already come and gone. They'll be teaching the people doctrines that are wrong. There's one today, the prosperity gospel, which is being taught in churches that, you know, you get saved, your, your life will be so wonderful. That's not a prophecy. That's a teaching. Among you, saved people, who privily shall bring in damnable heresy. So they're not going to come in with, with a sign saying, hello, my name is Deceiver. They're going to start their own little groups. They're going to start their own little things. They're going to start their own little home Bible studies. They're going to talk amongst people. They're going to get their flyers out. They're going to try to get their books out. But they're not going to do it in open. They're going to do it privily. The pastor of the sheep ought to be aware of this. And ought to be known of this. And find out if these people are in the congregation and boot them. Now this is one reason. I mean, we're only on one verse, verse one. This is only. This is one of the reasons why you should not invite lost people into your church. How do you know who you let in in that church? Well, my friends, you know, they're Jehovah Witnesses. I'm gonna invite them to church so they can hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do Jehovah Witnesses teach false? Yes, they do. What do you do inviting them in the church? Don't Roman Catholics, don't they teach a false heresy? I'm going to bring my Roman Catholic family into church so they can hear the gospel. 
What are you doing bringing them? You deal with lost people outside the church. You don't bring them in the church. Damnable. Damnable heresy. Damn. Condensation. People could get lost and never be saved by what they teach. In the church. In the fellowship. The congregation of Christians. Even denying the Lord that brought that bought them. And, all right, let's look, denying the Lord that bought them. Christ died for all. The Bible says many will go into the broad way. Few that will go into the straight gate. Christ died for everyone. Here are people who are in a congregation of believers. And they deny Jesus Christ who died on Calvary's cross to bring in their heresy. They are in a congregation with Bible believers of Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. And these people are allowed to be taught and they don't believe that. you got trouble. That bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Acts 20, 28-32. These people will be destroyed by God. But God's going to allow them to walk and talk on this earth. Like in, uh, in it's read in, with one of the kings, God said, Hey, lying spirit, go ahead, deceive that king. And what's bad enough for God is God will give you what you want. You want a false prophet? You want a false teacher? You want damnable heresies? God will give it to you. If you choose to reject the truth for a lie. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. Destruction. Deadly. So there will be many that will go the Broadway. And with on top of that, there will be many that will follow these people. You may plant the seed, Mark chapter 4, but these people come along and devour the seed and they're called Satan. This is the work of Satan. It's a deadly. Lucifer, Satan, John 8, 44, he's a murderer. Pernicious, deadly. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. The gospel. They do not adhere to it. They deny it. And they come to your front door with their magazines. And John tells us in the second, God, uh, the second epistle of John. Do not let them into your house. Now it's kind of funny because if the church is not to be your living room. And the Bible says where two or three are gathered together in my name. And you're a husband, you got a wife, and you got children, and these people deny the gospel of Jesus Christ, and John tells us, don't let them into your house. You must have a congregation in your house, and you're being warned of not letting these deceivers in by Peter and by John, Scripture with Scripture. How do you know they're deceivers? Ask them about the gospel. And it's not that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again. They're deceivers. They need to go bye-bye. You deal with them. You work with them. But if they don't, let them go. You be the witness, and then send them off. And through covetousness. Ooh, we want something. Satan told Jesus, if you fall down and worship me, I'll give you all these things. Covetous here is not just money. It's I want fame. I want the people to worship me. I want the luxury luxury of the television channel or the radio dial. I want people to know my name instead of Jesus' name. There's more to coveting than just money. 
covetous they shall covetous shall they with feigned words lying words make merchandise of you they're going to sell you they will sell you out with pretend words the sacraments the mass Your husband died. Well, if you give us money and then candle and then we'll out of place that there's no place as purgatory, and you can go for all the religions like that. Peter is warning us that there are deceivers. They'll teach. They have damnable, deadly ways. They want something, and they'll get it from you. Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not. And their damnation slumbers not. They're going to reap what they sow. They're damning people. They're going to be damned. They'll get their just rewards. <coughs> Relax. They won't get away with what they're doing. But oh, the many people that will fall for them. The tools of Satan. Remember, he's a lion. Remember, we're, we're to avoid him. Remember, we're to be acknowledged of the ways of Satan. For if God spared not the angels that sin, angels have sinned. And Hebrews says that we've entertained angels unaware. The Bible we read through all the Gospels that there are devils out there. So when you get somebody, whatever religion, I'm not picking on religion, but anyway, I've seen an angel. Is it an angel that sinned? Or is it a holy angel? Cornelius saw a holy angel. You ever ask yourself that? For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell. Some of those angels are in hell today burning. Not all of them. Revelation 12 says there's a third of them that Satan is going to take out of heaven. So there are still at least a third of the angels following Satan right now are in heaven. And deliver them into chains of darkness. They once stood before God in light, and now they're in complete, utter darkness. Hell is darkness. Now, we speak about hell fire, and it's true, the lake of fire. But we need to realize the Bible says it's darkness. It's not red. It's not orange. It's not yellow. It's not a white flame. Hell is pitch darkness. Those angels that stood in the light of God and said that, Around God's throne, there's a circular rainbow. I've never seen that. I will. Those angels saw it, and they are now in darkness of hell, tormented. To be reserved unto judgment. They're in hell, but they haven't been judged yet. That judgment will be at, the, at, the, at Revelation 20, the great white throne judgment. And Paul tells Christians, don't you know you shall judge angels? Isn't that interesting? There are angels and men's souls in hell today burning. And we will come out of hell. And they will be judged and cast into the lake of fire which burneth forever. And spared not the old world. But saved Noah the eighth person. So, the old world, according to, to God and the Bible, is the flood. The flood was not only a judgment of God, but it's also a time period. Save Noah, the eighth person. Eight people were in that ark, no one else. Now, was God so unrighteous, you know, that he killed the whole world? A preacher of righteousness. Uh oh. All right, let's go to some Baptist churches in, in the Sunday school classrooms. When they come out of church, let's have 
Who, who built the ark? Okay, Noah. Very good. Besides being a shipbuilder, what else was Noah in his life? How many of them would know that he preached to the world? He preached that the rain and the judgment of God is coming. Get in that ship. Get in that ark. Come. And God sent a wonderful sign. All of a sudden, here comes these animals, male and female, by two. Clean animals by seven. Now, if that wasn't enough for the world to say, hey, what is going on here? That even it started began to rain, they still didn't get in that ark. Eight people were saved. And Jesus said, it shall be the days of Noah and the days of Lot. Lot, three people made it out. And what I've seen in the church today, there are going to be very few Christians when the rapture comes. Very few. It's not going to be a my It ain't going to be a worldwide revival. That defies the Bible. You want to think evolution. He preached righteousness. God will save you if you get into this ark. I don't think he probably would. It doesn't say anything about come and help me build the ark. Just get in. Bringing in the flood judgment upon the world of the ungodly godly so God judged the angels that sin God judged the world that sin and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes condemned them with an overthrow making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly Angels, the flood, Sodom. Angels are in hell. The ones that sinned. Those that were in Noah's time that did not listen to him. Drowned out are dead, are in hell. The people that were Sodom and Gomorrah who had open sin. And it's more than just sodomy, according to Ezekiel. They've been destroyed and are in hell. And delivered, now look at this, just Lot. Now that doesn't mean Lot was alone because he got out with his two daughters. His wife made it some of the way. How far she got, we don't know. Enough to see, turn around and see Sodom. And turn to the pillar. So this just means he was right. He'd been judged to be found true. And also with scripture, with scripture, Abraham was praying for Lot. After God told him what he was going to do. Lord, 40 people? Yeah, I won't do it for 40. Lord, 30 people? I won't do it for 30. Abraham had Lot on his mind and God answered his prayer. And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. That's our life today. We are vexed with the filthy lives of people around us. We got the filthy billboards. We got the filthy talk. We got the filthy lives and the filthy people. And their dress and their, and their conduct. And it soils us. For that righteous man, oh boy, mark him with verse 5 with Noah. It's the same word, righteous. Dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul. You're going to see Lot in heaven, according to the Bible. From day to day with their unlawful deeds. They were polluting Lot and Lot was right with God. Now you wouldn't think so if you had just Genesis in your hands. He told, man, he lingered. 
Come on, let's go, let's go. I would stick around. But he did try to tell his family about the judgment, as Noah tried to tell the people. Yeah, he treated the angels right. The Bible records, maybe this is strange, but he, he went to his sons-in-laws. Maybe he went, to, but I don't know. I'm not going to read more than that, because we don't know. But he at least preached to his sons-in-laws. Give him that much credit. There are Christians today don't preach to nobody. Noah preached to the world. Lot preached to his family. I give him a lot more credit than Christians today. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, Noah and Lot. They were delivered out of the judgment. And to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished judgment I mean the great white throne judgment all the people in the world the, the world population minus eight in Noah's time are going to stand the great white throne judgment all the angels that sin are going to stand the great white throne judgment everybody in Sodom and Gomorrah and there were three other cities in town are going to stand at the judgment but Noah won't be there his wife and his three sons and their wives won't be there and if they are if Lot is there the books will be open and their name will be found in the last in the last book of life they will not go in the lake of fire they will come out of that judgment well according to the scriptures you say what's all this about why are we taking a break about angels the flood and Sodom because if God judged these people and angels, you better believe these deceivers are going to be judged. And they're going to be with who? The lost angels, the lost people of the world, the lost people of Sodom and Gomorrah. They will be in that crowd. They're not saved. Anybody who denies Jesus, the gospel, they're not saved. The heretics. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be put. I'm godly by Jesus Christ. My righteousness is Jesus Christ. Well, guess what? He is going to deliver me out of temptation. He is going to save my soul. And I will not get that judgment of damnation or punishment of condemnation. I won't get it. Because by the righteousness of God, Jesus Christ, I'm godly. That's the only way I'm godly. We find, we're going to find this in Jude 6, Lord willing. But chiefly, importantly, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness, Two, one, denying the Lord Jesus Christ. Despise government. Ooh, that's on shaky ground right now. Aren't there people today that profess to be Christians and deny and despise the rulers of this world and this country? Then we just have eight years, oh, we can't stand him? What are you gonna do with the Bible? Let's just read it again. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh, the lust of the uncleanness, and despise government. There it is. Peter has told us already, Paul has told us already, we are to respect and honor the government and the officials thereof. Now, if you don't, hmm. And remember, 2 Peter, you're talking about people who are in the congregation. Oh. I'll leave that alone. Presumptions are they self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. They will say what they have to say about the leaders and the people who are running, who are in office. They will speak Ill evil of the police. Oh. Police are authority theaters. 
Let's keep on going, I guess. We'll find that in Jude 19. We'll find that in Jude 8. Philippians 2, 3, and 4. Whereas angels, we'll get back to angels now, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. Angels follow authority in contrast to chapter 2, verse 10. An angel will not make fun of any Roman governor. An angel will not bless me, a president. An angel would never stick their, their nose in the, to a king. But men will. But these, as natural brute, that's animal-like, beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. We're back to human beings again. Now, be taken and destroyed, that is to be put down. To speak evil of things, righteousness. They speak evil of righteousness, chapter 2, verse 1. And their own corruption with their own followers, their own ways they're against the Bible against Jesus Christ against the power that be yes Satan sets up people in government now before you go oh yeah that man there no the Bible also records that God sets up government God puts people in uh, Romans chapter 13 God set Saul King Saul as much as he set King David, as much as he set King Solomon, and he set King Manasseh, the wickedest, longest reigning king. What do you do with that one? In all actuality, the Bible speaks as far as government authorities, no matter how wicked they are, you're to pray for them, you're to witness to them, you're to be a good citizen of your country. And if you talk evil with them, if you're at the judgment seat of Christ, uh oh, you'll be burnt up. You will give an account. And shall, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. Ooh. Oh. Reward for witnessing. Reward for people who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Reward for giving money to God. Reward for supporting missionaries. Reward for praying for people. Reward for doing right. A reward for being unrighteous. Now, what is that? For the Christian, is absolutely nothing. Dust. There you go. Here's your dust. And you can't even take the dust into glory. It's swept away, vacuum away. Whatever happens to that dust at the judgment seat of Christ, you don't keep it. If you're unsaved at the great white throne judgment, your reward of unrighteousness is the different degrees of hell and burning and torment. People that deceive that we're reading about right now will get more degrees of torment in hell than the people that follow them. Because of what they've done to people. There are different degrees spoken about in hell. People who lead people astray from the gospel of Jesus Christ will get a greater damnation of eternal hell than those that follow. Even Jesus said one time, you're, I think it's a twofold more child of hell than the person you, you got. So there is a reward of unrighteous. I don't want that one. As they that count it pleasure, pleasure, Pleasure 
Woohoo! Yay! Romans 1, 21 to 32. Go check that one out. To riot. Oh, that sounds interesting. In the daytime. That is current events in America. That has been the daily news for the last year, two years now. A person gets shot by the police or killed by the police. Or we don't like that person in, in, in office. We don't like this person. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We don't like this person in our authority of this country. We don't like this person in authority of this country. We want this person to be authority of the country. This person shouldn't be in the White House. Why are these riots, why are these things incomprehending to the fact is they speak? Second Peter chapter 2 is current events of America and a lot of these people are coming out of churches that are called Baptists. You need to read chapter 2 as far as these people and say, Ooh, what position do they hold? What are they? They ought to be somebody to follow. Pleasure. Spots. You know what spots are? They are in blemishes. Spots are meant to be removed. Think about you got this nice dress or this nice tuxedo or suit. You, you take it out for a, for a special occasion, and you take it out, and you, it's on the clothes there, and you see it's got stains on it. That's not good. That nice dress that, that you wore at, at, at that special event, and you pull it out of the closet, and it's all stained. That's not good. It's been defiled. That's what these people are. They're defiled. And yet, according to chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3, they're in the congregation, and they proclaim to be Christians, too. And they are getting followers, and people are listening to them, and let's go and, and, and act upon America with the Tea Party. Oh! How many churches fell for that one? How many church, let, Let's do the Million Man March on Washington, D.C. How many churches were involved in that one? No, you know what the Christian is supposed to be doing? It's not supposed to be minding politics. We're supposed to be preaching the gospel. The best way to fix the government is to witness to the leader and get him saved. Get him in his Bible. Sporting themselves. Sporting themselves. Sport. Sport. Hey, that's in your newspaper. That's on your TV news. They got news channels for sporting. Sporting themselves. With their own deceivings. Let me, I don't, I don't change the Bible, but let me bring the Bible up to date. And I'll read the Bible correctly. Sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they fellowship with you. Okay, I'm going to read the Bible. Sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. You have a church fellowship dinner, and you might be hosting some of these people. Invite people out to our fellowship dinner after them service. Having eyes full of adultery. Ooh. Hollywood. This is, it's not just an adultery act. It, it's just full. It, their mind is set to adultery. And by the way, adultery in the Bible is not just a sexual sin. It's a sin against God by serving other gods. You are sleeping with Satan in the world. And that cannot cease from sin. They won't give up. They won't repent. They won't get right. How's that? Beguiling, that's lure or recruit. I missed them Saturday morning coming to my house. They will try to come here and try to get us to be involved with their kingdom home. 
No matter the fact is my car or my house proclaims that Jesus is God, you need to be saved by Jesus Christ. They don't see that. They'll come here and they'll still think that we can fall for their crap. Unstable souls. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3. They're in the church. Or they will be in the church. Somebody will invite these people in. It's friends, of course. And heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. Is that really somebody you want? With the heart man believes on the righteousness. With this heart, it's covets. It's cursed children. You know a child that was cursed in the Bible? That was religious and not right with God? Go back to Genesis chapter 4, Cain. Cain brought fruit of his hands. That's religion. These people are involved in religion. Romans 6, 6, Ephesians 2, 3. Which have forsaken the right way. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Though so they have forsaken Jesus Christ and are going astray. They left. They don't want to do right. That is the story of the Jehovah Witnesses. Many of those people have been are born again Christians that have been brought out by them by their sneaky tactics. They are wolves in sheep's clothing. They admire and feast on newborn babes in Christ. Following the way of Baal. Numbers 22.5 The son of Besor. Isn't that, isn't that Besor? Sometimes these names work out wonderful in the Bible. Who loved the wages of unrighteousness. We'll find this in Jude 11. Now about Baal. Numbers 22. He's a hireling prophet. He's a paid prophet. He will go the way whatever the money is. You got good good Catholic money? I'll, I'll teach in your Catholic church next week. You got good charismatic money? I'll be in your charismatic church next week. Uh, uh, good tent money? I'll be in your tent meeting next week. I will be whatever prophet you want me. I will be whatever denomination you want me to do. And today there are churches that don't even have denominations. And he makes a market of his gift. Listen, God worked with him. God used him. God spoke to him. God worked with him. And he used it for his own gain, coveting. He used it for his own ways. And guess what? God never stopped him. Only when it came to the blessing and cursing of Israel. Other than that, he let him go. And he damned his soul. There's the way of Balaam. There's an error of Balaam, Jude 11. And there's a doctrine of Balaam, Revelation 12, verse 14. Lord willing, we'll get to There's four things of Balaam. His story, numbers, the way of Balaam. He'll do anything he can in the name of God or religion for money. And we'll see Balaam again in Jude. And hopefully, Lord willing, we'll see Balaam again in Revelation. And guess what? Revelation chapter 2, that's speaking about a church. So Revelation 2 and 2 Peter 2, scripture with scripture, we're talking about in the church. But was rebuked for his iniquity. Iniquity. Isn't God great to dumbass speaking? <laughs> I bet you they changed that in the Bible. The dumbass speaking with the man's voice. Forbade the madness. Of the prophet what was what was the madness of the prophet didn't he beat that up that I was gonna say ox didn't he beat that ass that ass three times preventing him from getting killed by the angel man he bam 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 and God says 
give that animal a mouth. And that man was so foolish and so much in his sin. And so, he realized he did not realize that he was carrying a conversation on with an animal. He had your cartoons in Numbers 22 live to the fact. He was talking to animals and only cartoons in certain places down in Orlando will try to make it so real. The original animal man talking comes out of the Bible. I believe the animals and all that talked and, and did things with Adam and Eve according to the Flintstones. But that's my own personal thing. But here an animal talked to God. I mean talked to Balaam. For God. But was rebuked for the iniquity, the dumbass speaking. I like to read that again. With the man's voice, man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. So animals listen to God. More than man listens to God. He told some ravens, I want you to go feed my prophet. He told a donkey that's never been bride again, you're taking me into the city. Now my understanding is you don't just hop on a donkey. What I've been told. Without ending up on the ground flat. That's what I've been told about donkeys. These are wells without water. My grandparents had a well. And every summer we would have to we would have to limit what was that? Conserve water. We would have to over there. We have to do, uh, you know, watch how much water we would. We have to take a sponge bath. We would have to not flush the toilet. And these prophets here, they don't bring no water. <clears throat> over to John chapter four. What did Jesus tell that woman at the what? At the well. I am the water of life. So they do not have no water of Jesus Christ. Isn't that a great? Peter, that's a great illustration you use. Peter and the disciples went and got food for Jesus when he was speaking to that woman at the well. Clouds that are carried with tempest. A storm cloud. A thunder uh, cloud, a cloud that brings thunder and lightning, a storm. For Peter, that was that was that was a couple times when they were in a ship with Jesus. It almost sunk the boat. That's no good. They are carried with a tempest. And then they just go wherever the storm. It's like being in a sailboat. Just put the sails up and go wherever that, that, that wind, and you could end up on a rock. Crash. To whom the mist, mist of darkness is reserved forever, Jude 12, to tell. They have no water. That man that was in hell, the rich man, said, oh, I can just have a drop of water. Peter must have been paying attention to that parable. Peter's a remarkable man. I think we give Peter too little credit. I, he just loved the Lord. And his mouth loved the Lord. Seriously. Really loved the Lord. He's the only one that stepped out of the boat and said, Lord, can I walk? And he did. You can't do that if you don't have faith. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they use big words. Big vocabulary word. And God says it's vanity. It's nothing. No use. They allure. Like a fishing. Through lust of the flesh. There are hollow words. Lust of the flesh. That is one of the tools. And First John is the tool of Satan in his toolbox. The lust of the flesh. That's one of the tools that. <coughs> Satan tried on Jesus. That's one of the tools that Satan got victory over David. That's one of the tools that Satan got victory over Eve. These deceivers are working with Satan. 
How did Baal help and get Israel angry with God? The lust of the flesh. They started sleeping with the women. They started going whoring around. Lust of the flesh. Through much wantonness. Oh, I want this. I want that. I got to have this. I got to have that. I want covetousness. I want people. I want fellowship. I want a radio. Please, if you don't give us money, we're going to be off the radio next week. Oh, please give us more money for the television show. Or we're going to be off the air next month. We want you. Please send the money in. Please send your prayer cards in. Please, please, yeah, give us, give us, give us one. We want you to call us. We want you to send messages. We want you to do this. We want you. Want, 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 want. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. Jude 16. No, Judges. Oh, that Jude. Jude 16. We're going to see this again in Jude. Lord willing. While they promised them liberty. It's taught. We'll give you all kinds of freedom. We'll give you great mercies with God. We'll give you virgins. We'll give you, you know time out of this place we'll give you wives on the cloud we'll make you like gods will they themselves are the servants of corruption their walk does not back their talk corruption dead decaying rust For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought into bondage. Wait a minute. You said freedom. You are a hypocrite. Well, what must I do? You know, go peddle these magazines. Go to, go do this. Go do that. You got to do this. You got to say this. You got to be here. You got to do this. You got to be part of this. You got to do this. Wait a minute. I thought you said I was free. Well, you got to do. You must do works. Now, with a Christian in salvation, it's, it's, it's a free will. I want to do what I do for the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm not forced. I can stop, and I am still saved. I will always be saved. I won't get rewards. But God's not forcing me. Religion forces you. There's, there are some religions out there. If you're not buried in our graveyard, you're not going to heaven. If you're not married at our altar... If you don't do what we tell you to do, you're not in with God. That is a bondage. You are a hypocrite. You're locked up. You're in stocks. You're in jail. For if after they have escaped the pollution, great word, of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, if they've been freed, they are again entangled therein. They return to sin, the same sin, from which they are free. They are entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. I don't know how far to take that verse, but it look, looks like they get right and they just go right back and doing what they were doing. And their worse is going to be even worse. Worse hurt. Worse for it had been better for them not to have known the right, the way of righteousness, Jesus Christ. Somebody preached to them. Someone told them the gospel. Then, after they had known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Now, you realize, when we preach on the streets, we say Jesus saved, only Jesus saved. You need to believe on the gospel that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day, <coughs> according to the scriptures. When we say that, do you realize I may be talking to someone who's a deceiver? And he's not going to get saved. But he has heard the way of truth. He has heard what the Bible has said. I have told him what the Bible said. And if he continues about his deceiving ways, he's going to be double damned. When he's heard the gospel and he's heard what God expects, he has been told what God expects for a man to do to be saved. 
and he goes about continuing deceiving and desires and the fact is that Christ saved and whatever disregard that he teaches he is double damned if I were to go to a Roman Catholic priest and say listen it's by the salvation of Jesus Christ alone minus no works at all and that guy goes about you know you got to eat this you got to He's going to be double down because he's been told. You don't realize what the gospel does. Not only is it talk about people being saved, and also that people who deceive people, you're supposed to come out of it. So some people that you witness to, you may be witness to not only for salvation, but you may be God trying to correct their ways. And they won't. But, I love this one at the close. It has happened unto them according to the true proverb. Here's a proverb. Peter's going to quote a proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. And you've seen dogs do that. It's a disgusting habit. <coughs> he eats something, he gets sick, he goes and vomits it up, then he goes back and he devours it. The sow that was washed in her to her wallowing in the mire a pig you wash the pig you let him go and he's back in the mud you say well what is this what is this natural proverb this is a natural proverb it happens it's true what have we been talking about we've been talking about deceivers as a dog is turned to his vomit all dogs go to heaven God through Peter says that a unsaved, deceiving male prophet or teacher is a dog. An unclean animal is a type of deceiver. Now, you got a woman as the soul that was washed to her. That woman that de deceives you on the television... God says she's a pig. A pig is also an unclean animal. So God likens the two unclean animals of his word, the dog and the pig, to unsaved, deceiving prophets, and even gives their sex, male and female. And I'm sorry he doesn't give no neutral sex. It's either male or female when it comes to deceiving prophet. You can't be both or either or none. So see, God's great. 